Was G.I. Joe originally going to be in the first Transformers live-action movie? Could Hasbro have had a cinematic universe of their own that predated Marvel's? Consider this. Don't you find it a little odd how in both the first Transformers movie and the first G.I. Joe movie, we have two heroic main soldier characters. One, a more humorous black guy. Left cheek! Left cheek! Left cheek! And the other, a slightly more serious leader type white guy, who are both ambushed by the bad guys with technology that is more advanced than anything they had ever seen before, and later are made aware of this secret government organization with their own high-tech toys. It seems to me like it's very possible that early on in the development process, Josh Duhamel and Tyrese Gibson's characters were originally intended to be G.I. Joe characters instead of just random soldiers. Well, that is to say they probably would have started off as random soldiers who ended up joining G.I. Joe like how Channing Tatum and Marlon Wayne's characters did in the G.I. Joe movie. I could see it happening like this. They are ambushed by Scorpionok and they successfully defeat him. Afterwards, they are recruited by a member of G.I. Joe, or more likely a small team of G.I. Joe operatives who were sent to track down the alien incursion, although obviously they keep it vague and don't reveal themselves to be G.I. Joe just yet, simply stating that they're special ops or something. They do, however, mention how all of today's modern technology has come from studying the Transformers, leading to the two tagging along and they are given some new toys. The battle in Mission City happens and the day is saved. And at the end, instead of John Voight's character saying how he's shutting down Sector 7, which doesn't exist in this draft, G.I. Joe filling that role. No, in, in fact, that whole stupid subplot with the hackers and the Secretary of Defense, that's all gone. I hate the whole play. The whole play. Instead, it's just Mainframe or whoever in G.I. Joe intercepting the Decepticon communications. But yeah, instead of all that nonsense at the end, it's just our soldiers being invited to join G.I. Joe, setting up for the next movie, G.I. Joe. And since we don't need to spend time repeating the same plot points in the G.I. Joe movie, that means we can spend that time setting up future spin-offs. Maybe someone working at G.I. Joe, now having seen the Transformers in action, decides to develop some transforming vehicles, creating Mask. Or like the hologram technology of Gem could be based off the hollow avatars of the Transformers. And so on and so on, just keep planting ideas for future franchises where it makes sense. You know, not everything necessarily needs to be turned into a spin-off of Transformers or G.I. Joe. But whatever the case may be, I guess Hasbro decided not to have Transformers and G.I. Joe in the same universe. Now, this has been a theory of mine for quite a long time, and I'm sure I'm not the first one to come up with this. But at TFCon Chicago 2018, we had special guest Rick Alvarez there who sort of confirmed that Hasbro had this idea all along. Hasbro wanted to do this crossover group called Unit E, which would take characters from a bunch of their different franchises like Transformers, G.I. Joe, Stretch Armstrong, Mask, Micronauts, Inhumanoids, Gem, basically their version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They actually did a comic book about this at San Diego Comic-Con 2011, but that's about as far as it went. Rick Alvarez even stated that they were specifically planning to have Tyrese Gibson's character join G.I. Joe and get the code name Roadblock in the second G.I. Joe movie. But then Dwayne The Rock Johnson of course joined the cast and that was that. Which is a shame because that would have meant Hasbro's cinematic universe would have predated Marvel's since Transformers was released in 2007 and Iron Man was released in 2008. Oh well, maybe for the reboot. <laughs>